Hello, internet people. So here I am back on the floor again. I really do need to clean off some of my desks. I got literally rooms filled with desks and tables filled with projects and project parts and components. I need to clean all that up. But here I am on the floor again. Um, the purpose of this video is I basically wanna give you a brief walkthrough, um, kind of a quick overview of the board again, and then take you through the new menu. I have just released uh, firmware version 1.15 and there's been quite a few changes. One of the good benefits is I find that the range of the board has actually been extended. So where I was getting real time of uh, about 10 kilometers, I now have about 200 kilometers already on the board. Um, it's been great. But with that, now I found that I'm actually getting closer to about 13, 14 kilometers range. So that's a nice benefit um, of the new firmware. Um, other than that, um, I find the board's a lot easier to actually ride. Um, I've added kind of a better cruise um, handling system. So basically you can accelerate the board ride level and the board will carry its speed until such time that you need to slow down or break. All works nicely now. I'll take you through the menus, fire this up. So first thing I'll do, let's do a quick overview. This is a, so this is a 12S system. Um, you can build it 12S, 10S, depending on which one of these hub motors you get. Um, I went with the 48 volt, 800 watt version of this. Um, handles 12S beautifully. So give you a walkthrough of the components. This is my battery housing. It is a 12S 2P um, Samsung 18650 25R battery cell. I use the 25Rs mostly because they give you the available um, amperage on demand. So the 25Rs give you a little less overall power, but they give you better on demand. So that's kind of a nice thing, especially when you want to have a system keep you um, upright. Um, you want to make sure that you have that amperage available to you so that the board can respond appropriately so that it can react and everything stays good. Component-wise, I always intended on putting a cover on this, but um, honestly, there's a cover over top of the Arduino Nano. And there's the beeper, just kind of, if I can get around the tire, that little hole, there's a beeper mount on the inside of that. Kind of hard to see. But, um, so the beeper's in there, the uh, MPU 6050 is in there, which is the gyro accelerometer, and then... There's still a USB access. It's hard to see. I should have turned the light on on this thing. But that's all in there. Now, honestly, over the last about 200 kilometers of riding, uh, honestly, because this is all in front of the tire, I find that every time I ride through anything wet or any kind of moisture like that, usually ends up on my pant leg. Fender probably is gonna be a good idea at some point, but normally I don't go out on wet days. Um, honestly, it's not really all that safe in the first place. Um, this will handle wet pavement no problem, but if you ride over a bunch of wet leaves or wet dirt, um, yeah, that it doesn't always go well. You need traction in order for everything to work. So uh, that, and I hate the rain. So everything being uncovered allows everything to breathe. This way I don't have any heating issues. So. I'm probably gonna leave everything uncovered, but that's basically it. Back here, I have just more wires, but that's my sparkless switch. This is basically the housing for the charger and the power switch. So we'll fire this up. And I'll flip this back over. And of course, oop, no, I wasn't quick enough. So basically the first thing, I'll actually do that again. We'll shut that down, fire it up. So the first thing you'll notice is the board is calibrating. That's what those numbers are. If the board is in motion, it's gonna keep resetting the calibration. So the board needs to be stationary and it will calibrate. And what it's basically calibrating is because gyros and accelerometers always have a bit of a twitch. So what's happening is the first thing the board does is it kind of calculates the range of that twitch and the uh, gyros offset. So the gyro will always be kind of slowly kind of rotating. So it kind of takes that moment to kind of calculate what that rotation is and then stops it and then adds the twitch. So this way the board can be in the best position to properly calculate what its angle should be. Getting in and out of the menu is still the same. Hold down the top button without being on the bottom button. 
It usually takes around five to seven seconds and will enter into the menu. Now, um, due to kind of floating, even though I have resistors and everything in for pull-ups on um, the switches, um, unfortunately, there is still a little bit of float that kind of kicks in every once in a while and makes it feel like a button has been pressed. To resolve that, there is basically a half second timer on the button. So if you press it quick, it won't do anything, but you have to press it for about a half second and it will register a click. So starting at setting one, this is basically your max speed setting. So the way the board calculates your max speed is your, first of all, your cruising speed will max out at 10 below this, and this is your percent of throttle and in each direction. So right now I'm set at 60% throttle forward. Now this will not stop the ESC from putting out power to the motor. What this will do is it will limit the cruising speed. And then if you go over this by 10%, so if you reach 70 on the duty cycle, what will happen is the beeper will sound, letting you know that you are going faster than your set speed by 10%. I find that this kind of overall seemed to feel the best. Um, normally you can, the beeper won't go off because you are 10% below this anyway, or up to this. Uh, but if you are really pushing the board, and I mean, you will know it because you are physically pushing the board, then the beeper will sound. I used to have a kickback that kind of told you, hey, you're, you're kind of accelerating too quick, or you know, you've gone too fast, and the board would actually start to kind of um, lunge forward a little bit, like on the motor, which would cause the board to kind of kick up and let you know that, you know, you're accelerating or that you're going too fast. Only problem with that is when I was going too fast, I was usually doing over 30 kilometers an hour. Um, so if the board starts to kick up at that point, it throws your balance off a little bit and well, that can be bad. So first setting is your max speed. Second setting is your center. So basically, to set this, you can either ignore it because it will automatically set itself with settings three and four, or you can put it on something like a milk crate, which holds the board level. And then you just simply press the back button and it will set the center point. So right now it's set it at 19 degrees to the rear. Um, that's fine. The next two settings will fix that. So the next one is the maximum forward angle. To set that, basically place the front of the board on level ground and press the rear switch. So basically the max forward angle is 22.1 degrees. Setting number four is the max back tilt. Same thing, place the back on solid ground, press for at least half a second and release. And the maximum rear tilt is 20.9. Actually, I'm gonna try that again just to make sure that seems better. Yeah, okay, that's better. All right, so if we were to flip back around to setting number two again, which is the center point, there, that's the new calculated center point, which is 0 0.5 degrees, probably a little bit forward, but that will basically level out the board. All right, setting number, so that's forward tilt, that's back tilt, that is the acceleration speed. So acceleration speed used to be calculated, um, not as much acceleration, but cruising speed used to be calculated by degrees forward and degrees back. Um, I got rid of that, it's now a constant. If you put the board at greater than four degrees forward, the board will start to accelerate at the constant speed. And if you put it greater than four degrees back, it will slow down at the constant speed. Now remember, the board is still going to accelerate and decelerate depending on how you angle the board anyway. So that is the maintained cruising speed. If you need to speed up real quick, you can. And the reason why I did that as a constant is so that you can basically climb over things, do stuff like that, and not really throw off your cruising speed too much. Um, I found that it was a safer ride with a constant speed acceleration versus a variable speed acceleration. Last setting in the menu is the angle retention power. So this will basically be how much power, so this would be in a PID loop, this would be your p-value, this would be how much power to respond to angle, So, and it's a multiplier. So basically, um, I find that you'll have to try this out yourself. Each board will be slightly different, but I find 45 to be a good setting for this. Um, so basically, 
that's how much power it will respond to whichever angle, and that's what keeps your butt from being on the ground. So set that as high as you probably can. Um, the way you'll know if the board is too high is because you'll start to feel wobble. The board will start to kind of bounce back and forth a bit when you're riding it. That tells you that that setting is too high. Um, to reset any of these values, so to increment, you press the button once. This is probably not a good one for me to try just because of... But to reset any of these values, you hold the rear button. And if you continue to hold it for about, there you go, about basically three to five seconds, it will reset. So right now the max speed is 30. And then to increment, you just, like I said, press the button for at least half a second and it will increment. And then once again, if you need to reset, hold the button for about three to five seconds, it'll go back down to its lowest value. And that's it. To save your menu, simply hold it. Five to seven seconds. And you'll get a beep. So the beeper has now been included in more options. There are several things to watch for for beeping. One is if the battery dips down below the lowest um, safe zone. So there's going to be sag. So it'll actually allow you to wait for a certain period of time. So if the battery dips down below the lowest setting for a period of time, then the beeper will start to sound and continue to sound as long as the battery is below that, that level. Um, the second time you'll hear the beeper is if you accelerate, or if you, again, if the board goes beyond the preset um, duty, um, the board will give you a beep letting you know that you've accelerated too hard. So sometimes you might hear that beep either because the battery sag or because you've gone too quick. If you are, let's say, climbing up onto a strong curb or any kind of heavy bumps, um, or if you are prolonged climbing a hill. So I have found that this board handles hills beautifully now, as long as you can clear. So basically um, this board has a 21 degree incline because of how much clearance it has, which means I can climb anything that has a 21 degree incline or greater. Um, I used to avoid speed bumps, um, now I hit them, <laughs> um, just because the board can handle them now. It responds quick enough, um, you hit a speed bump and the board will basically jump over it and keep going. Speed bumps, curbs, grass, gravel, um, works good on everything. Tires held up pretty good, so I was a little worried about this cheaper Chinese kind of tire. This has got 200 kilometers on it. It is starting to wear down a bit, but honestly, um, it's done very well. 200-something um, kilometers on it, all kinds of terrain. It's held up. I'd say there's probably another 300 kilometers left on this tire. Um, and that's pretty much it. And honestly, um, I have a lot of toys. So I've got the Jixer in the garage. Um, I've got, you know, my cars. I got, you know, all kinds of fun stuff that uh, I can take out all the time. And honestly, I love just hopping on the board. It's great. I Basically pick it up, carry it outside, toss it on the ground, hit the power switch, and off I go. I go grocery shopping. Um, takes me basically five minutes exactly to go from here to the grocery store. Um, I can grab, usually I only grab a few things at a time anyway, unless I'm doing a big grocery shop. So I'll grab like three or four bags. And because you don't have a remote in your hand or nothing, you basically just hop back on the board, cruise home. Five minutes later, you're putting your groceries in the fridge and you're done. Um, I head out you know, see friends on it, things like that, at least when you can wait till COVID's over. But uh, no, board's held up very good. I love it. Um, it's been a great ride. It's an easy build. Um, pretty much, I'm still running the exact same hardware I did from day one. Um, been no hardware issues. I've just been kind of tweaking the firmware as time goes on. So anybody else building the boards, have fun. If you need, contact me, um, leave a message on here on the floor or on YouTube or whatever. I'll help out anybody that needs help. But honestly, this is a really simple, easygoing design. Um, not very many 3D printed parts. Um, anything I did 3D print is 3D printed in TPU, which is kind of like a rubbery plastic. Um, other than that, uh, there's no problem with wood. Wood is easy to work with. So instead of you know anything that was structural, wood, aluminum, it's cheap. It's easy, it's durable, and you don't have to worry about your board splitting in half on you um, while you're out cruising it. This is a real-world, real-use board design. Um, great build. So everybody have a good one.
safe riding out there and uh, get out and enjoy some of the weather. We're into a new year.